Hello there, Lunar Squadron. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Star Wars Outlaws video. This week has been an insane week for Star Wars Outlaws as we got an incredible extended gameplay demonstration for this game. We got so much new news about Star Wars Outlaws and on top of all of that, we've also got yet another interview from creative director of Massive Entertainment, Julian Garrity with StarWars.com, where he unveils some incredibly cool open world gameplay and story details. So we're going to unpack all of that, let you know everything you need to know from this interview. But first, if you're new to the channel, we would love to have you. And the way to do that is go down below this video, click the subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell notification button right on next to it. It's going to let you know every single time that Nick and I upload the latest and greatest Star Wars Outlaws videos. And make sure to follow us on Twitter at Lunar Squadron. With that out of the way, Nick, ready to get into this one? Oh, absolutely. It's been a great week for this game. But first, today's video is sponsored by Star Wars Hunters, the all new free to play multiplayer arena shooter out of Zynga and Lucasfilm Games. Ever since we got our hands on this game back at Star Wars Celebration 2022, we have been looking forward to this. Star Wars Hunters features brand new characters to the Star Wars galaxy, such as the Trandoshan Trapper Char, the Imperial Heavy Gunner Sentinel, the Dark Side Assassin Reeve, and many more. After you select a character, choose from a wide variety of customizables to look your part on the battlefield. There are a ton of ways to customize each hunter with multiple unique costumes, animations, and weapon appearances. There's also a game mode for everyone as Star Wars Hunters offers multiple PvP, 4v4, third person game modes set on battlefields inspired by iconic Star Wars locations across the galaxy. Let the hate flow through you as you battle it out in the Ewok Village, Mos Espa Pod Race, and Death Star Crossfire maps. Looking for a fine addition to your collection? Star Wars Hunters is free to play on the Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android devices. Looking to test your medal in the Hunters of the Outer Rim Tournament? Make sure to use our link down below in the description, download Star Wars Hunters, and join the fight today. Today's article is out of StarWars.com. It is titled, Star Wars Outlaws Julian Garrity Talks k vs Journey. This is a survival story. Nick, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, definitely. I think this is an interview that went a little under the radar this week, just given all of the brand new gameplay we got. Ubisoft really hit us with a lot of new content for Outlaws this week to the point where it's a little overwhelming and we're just a little taken back by how much they were willing to share. And where I want to start is with this question from StarWars.com where they ask, the presentation starts with KVS playing a game within the game. Is that a mini game for players and are there more to discover in Star Wars Outlaws? And Julian Garrity responds with, it is a playable game. One of the things that we were passionate about is having a lot of distractions within the world to make it feel alive. Even being able to bet on Fathiers or play Sabacc games. All of these things we felt constituted the scoundrel lifestyle. It was important for us to have a lot of different types of experiences for the players to discover. Andreas, this is incredibly exciting. So we knew already that we would be able to play Sabacc and then we would be able to bet on Fathers and do a bunch of different things. But even that little mini game that we saw at the beginning of that demonstration that looked like some form of like Star Wars Galaga or something, even stuff like that will be included in the game as something that players can interact with. And it just really feels like Ubisoft is building out a very alive and interactive world. And that is incredibly exciting. You know, I couldn't be more excited about this point, Nick, because there's nothing that frustrates me more with an open world than a shallow open world, because we've all played those games where you're trying to explore around an open world and you get to that door that looks like it should open and then it doesn't or a building that looks like you should be able to go into it and then you just can't and i really am vibing with their take on density over making an over expansive but shallow experience and that's something that we've heard from julian in the past and i think now we're starting to see the fruits of that philosophy with some more tangible examples things like this game that i think they are trying to fill spaces like miragana which he said before these cities are going to be more dense than expansive and i'm really vibing with that because 
for me, what that means is you're going to have more of an incentive to go around, explore places because there's a payoff to that exploration. It's not just like you're going to look at a building, say, okay, cool, and then go somewhere else. There's actually things to do in this world, which I love. Yeah, definitely. And then StarWars.com continues with this very interesting question where they ask, if there's a player who loves a specific element, like piloting, could they choose to focus on that for their gameplay? This feels very similar to kind of what you would experience in, say, Starfield, where you could focus on certain areas. And Julian Garrity responds with, For the full experience, what we wanted to do was create the scoundrel lifestyle, and that includes so many different facets, from piloting not only your ship, but also your speeder, to fisticuffs, to investigations. And every single session of gameplay is going to mix all of those things. But of course, if you want to focus maybe on smuggling and contracts in space, that is something that you can do. But the real outlaw gameplay comes when you look at it as a whole and you experience all of those things. There is a couple interesting things from this response from Julian here is the fact that we will be able to focus on contracts in space. And to me, that sounds incredibly fun. That sounds incredibly exciting. And we also get a little insight into their philosophy here when they were coming for the gameplay loop. And they were trying to balance all of these different elements of what makes a scoundrel in Star Wars. And that includes things like piloting, but it also includes things like being able to punch someone in the face in a cantina all the way to investigations. I thought that investigations point was also very interesting. Yeah, and on that same note here, we talk about smuggling and contracts, and so I was wondering immediately, how are we going to pick up on things like smuggling missions and and contracts in space and those sorts of missions? And, and Julian chimes into that just a little bit with this next bit where he's asked, we see Kay discover new opportunities during her adventures in space. Can that happen on planets in, as well? And Julian responds, that's also found on planets. It's a system that we developed called the Living World System. It's there to keep the world dynamic and interesting no matter what you're doing. There's always going to be something happening and you can even add to those things by picking up intel. So let's say you're in a cantina. You can lean against the bar and start eavesdropping in conversations and that may be the start of a quest that sends you across the galaxy. Nick, this is something that I gleaned from our early access gameplay where you can notice that NPCs say certain things about the world around you and it gives you that feel for what's going on. What are the power dynamics? And one thing that I thought would be really cool is if this information that you can learn from eavesdropping to NPCs, if that would be helpful in your mission somehow, maybe they could give you a hint on how to access a restricted area or maybe where to buy certain items or, or who knows what. The possibilities are really endless with this sort of storytelling. Now, it's very fascinating to me that not only are you going to be learning things from the NPCs about the world, but you can even kick off things such as side quests based on eavesdropping on NPCs. So I think it seems, at least from this interview and from what you've seen so far, that the rabbit hole is even deeper than what I thought it was. Yeah, definitely. And this feels very reminiscent of some of that classic Ubisoft gameplay style. I think back to Assassin's Creed 1 with those eavesdropping missions and you'd have to run around the city and figure out all the intel before you could proceed with the game, but with more of a modern flavor to it and especially a Star Wars flavor to it. And I really love how seamless that is going to feel within the game. It's not going to be clicking through a bunch of different menus. I'm really excited about that. And I also love the concept of a living world system because I think one of the questions that we see a lot from people is, will these worlds have stuff to do? Will there be collectibles to find? Will there be a reason to explore these planets? And from what we've been told, it definitely feels like Ubisoft and Massive here is attempting to accomplish exactly that. They want to give players the incentive to explore these worlds. And you can see it built into their philosophy here when it comes to this game. And another question that people ask is, when we go to these planets, these familiar planets, especially Tatooine, will we see familiar locations? Will we see iconic things from the Star Wars universe? Will we see something and be like, yes, we are in the galaxy that is Star Wars? And this next question addresses that. StarWars.com asks, if Kay and Nyx take the time on their journey across the galaxy to explore a planet like Tatooine, is it possible they might come across some landmarks? Something like a crate Dragon skeleton or other familiar Star Wars locations. And Julian says, that part of creating the game was a dream come true for us. 
We started from Moss Eisley and built out the city with a lot of details that are very much screen accurate to the movies. This game takes place between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It's that perfect moment where, you have, where we have such a vivid recollection of what those things were. So, of course, we're going to have the vast Dune Sea, the Rocky Canyons, and the labyrinth inside of those Rocky Canyons. But there are urban hubs like Moss Eisley, and of course, players have the opportunity to sneak into Jabba's palace. Andres, I love this answer. You can just tell how passionate Julian and his team are for Star Wars, for that original trilogy, for getting these iconic locations right. And this answer also tips us off a little bit as to what we can expect when it comes to the scale of a planet like Tatooine. We saw it a little bit in that gameplay showcase and it was very impressive, but to have confirmation that we're going to be able to go into the vast Dune Sea and all of the canyons and Jabba's palace and all of that stuff, very exciting. Yeah, and I mean, anyone can say things like this about their game. It's one thing to, to say things, but it's another thing to show off what you've got. And from the very bits of Tatooine that we saw, I'm thinking to one shot specifically of the Ubrickian trade tower in the background of that one shot where you can see the trade tower kind of peeking up in Mos Eisley. And it's shots like that that let me know we've got those key landmarks that you need when you're filling out a city as iconic as Mos Eisley. You've got the cantina and it looks so good. Um, and it just makes me can't wait to explore places like Jabba's Palace. I mean, we've seen concept art from Jabba's Palace. I just can't wait to actually explore the entire thing because a Jabba's Palace in an open world Star Wars game, like how cool is that going to be to poke around? What are all of the different rooms and chambers and we've seen that there's going to be a rancor in in Jabba's palace and I, I just can't wait to start seeing and exploring all the nooks and crannies of iconic locations like that and I'm also hoping that there are some surprises here as well Nick I'm glad that Julian isn't just rattling off locations that we're going to see in the game just quite yet uh, I'm hoping that he's leaving some things to be explored because I think that exploration and that curiosity in a game like this are going to be super important. Yeah, definitely. One thing I'm personally hoping for, especially since he talks about being able to bet on Fathiers, I'm hoping we will be able to go to Moss Espa and we can bet on some pod racing. I think that would be incredibly exciting and a nice little callback to the prequel trilogy, even though this takes place in the original trilogy. But of course, ND5 Commando Droid from the Clone Wars is in this game. So a lot of great mixing of the elements. And speaking of characters, we do have this brief section where we talk about Nyx, and StarWars.com asks, you've called Nyx a co-protagonist, which I really like. He can act as a decoy or charge into battle, but I notice he doesn't have his own health bar. Does that mean we don't have to worry about accidentally losing Nyx along the way? And Julian says 100%. You don't need to worry about that. He follows up by saying, we decided very early on that we weren't going to hurt Nyx. He's a bulletproof companion. He has been labeled as a bulletproof companion. And the reason we wanted to point this out is back when we were covering Jedi Survivor, we had some people reach out and ask us if we were worried about BD being destroyed or killed in that game. So we know some people are going to be worried about that. And if you are willing to take Julian at his word, he has confirmed that you do not need to worry about Nyx. He is bulletproof. He will make it through the entirety of this game. I just think it's fun that uh, that he's kind of confirmed that Nyx is an absolute unit, which we've known thus far. But just knowing that Nyx is invincible, I mean, that that's very cool. And then uh, closing out this interview, StarWars.com asks Julian, she sounds like Han Solo at the beginning of A New Hope, worrying mainly about himself, what do you think sets Kay apart from other Star Wars protagonists that we've met over the years? And Julian responds saying, for us, it was very important that she stood out. When we first meet Han Solo, he is the coolest character in the galaxy. Harrison Ford's interpretation is everything that you want in a space, you want a space cowboy to be. It is the embodiment of cool. Kay Vess is struggling to survive, she's messy, she's stumbling into trouble, she's a long way from being perfect. She's not an incredible gunslinger when we find her. She's not a pilot. All of those things happen because she throws herself at problems, she goes into it. She's a little bit reckless. That for me was super important because of the relatability of it. We should have video game characters and characters in books and movies that are absolutely not perfect, who live through their good qualities and 
also their faults and their actions too. Nick, I think this is a really fascinating quote. First and foremost, because we've seen a lot of comments where people have said that, you know, Kay is just a, a rip off of Han Solo and immediately write off the character because of a lack of creativity among the team at Massive, just kind of ripping off an iconic character like Han Solo, but giving us like a cheap knockoff. And it seems like with this quote that Kay Vess is very much not a knockoff of Han Solo. She is her own character in her own right with a very different set of character traits. She doesn't have that same suave coolness about her that Han has. She's kind of the exact opposite in a lot of ways. And I think that's going to be very interesting to see a character of her stature make it in this crowd of scoundrels who we expect to be those suave types that can talk themselves out of any situation. And it'll be interesting to see that. It'll It's like a, a nice change of pace. And he's playing up that relatability. It's as if we ourselves had thrown ourselves into the scoundrel fantasy here and tried to cut it as an outlaw without having any connections in the Star Wars universe like Han did. Um, so it, it's just an interesting play on this character, and, and it's interesting to see their insight. Yeah, honestly, this is a very exciting answer for a multitude of reasons. First off, hopefully this will help silence the people who are just saying this is this them attempting to make a female version of Han Solo, which is clearly not their intentions. Just because she's a smuggler doesn't mean they're trying to just rip off and change Han Solo. That was never the intention. So hopefully those people will just quiet a little bit. That would be nice. And also, it's incredibly exciting because it's going to be very fun to watch the character growth and progression throughout this story, which is roughly 30 hours of K Vest, where she's going to go from just a true amateur thrown into this very dangerous world and then by the end it will be just nice to see what she's grown into and where she ends up and that's just going to be a fun part of the journey so i absolutely love this answer from julian and i love his mindset where these characters should be relatable they shouldn't be perfect they should have faults because that is something that we all can relate to none of us are perfect so that is one of those things that will help us build rapport with these characters and build a, an attachment to these characters so just love this. Honestly, this was a great interview from Julian. He provided us with so many great new open world gameplay details, story details, and even some brand new character details, and a little bit into the philosophy of the team going into this game. So exciting. We have gotten so much great content, so much great new gameplay. Massive and Ubisoft really hooked it up for us this week. So guys, definitely down below in the comments, sound off on what your favorite aspect of this interview was, what your favorite aspect of what you've seen this week was, what you're most excited for, how you're feeling about this game going in. There is so much to talk about when it comes to Star Wars Outlaws, and we are only roughly two and a half months or so from the release date. It is quickly approaching. And also, once again, thank you to Star Wars Hunters for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys use our link down below and join the arena today. You guys definitely will not regret it. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all next time.